Now, I'm going to warn you, all right? This is a little bit of a spur-of-the-moment rant, and I guess I'm just kind of all hot and bothered because of all the preparation we've been having to do for the Time Teller Shop's Black Friday sale, but I'm going a little crazy, and I need to just let off some steam, all right? So I apologize, but you guys are cheaper than therapy. So Grand Seiko is a watchmaker that I think makes watches that are way more impressive than most of us give them credit for, okay? We, like... I think over the years, people are coming to realize that Grand Seiko is really like at the top of the watchmaking game when it comes to finishing and detailing, and, and they're just insane. You, you match them up against any Swiss watchmaker, and Grand Seiko can often come out on top. We've also seen in the last few years, Grand Seiko and Seiko uh, making moves to really delineate and define where their various product lines are. I've made a slew of episodes talking about this and complaining about this. Seiko is just really trying to position their various product lines more favorably and acquire more brand equity for Seiko, for Grand Seiko. And Creator is, you know, still way up there and they're, you know... It's gonna come down. Now, we've seen Massive price increases across the board with the Seiko, Grand Seiko, even Seiko 5s. And this may have benefited them, you know, generally speaking. But from a watch collector standpoint, I'm less likely to buy a Grand Seiko in 2021 or 2022 or like indefinitely. I'm, I'm much less likely to buy a Grand Seiko now. And I can admit they make some of the best, most highly finished watches out there. But I'm probably, I just, I don't, I don't know if I would buy another one. Just let me explain. It is 12.53 PM. Let's get down to business. <laughs> So we're all looking at my beautiful Grand Seiko J14070. This is the first Grand Seiko ever produced. And I absolutely love this watch. I cherish this watch. It is uh, just a shining star in my collection. I am so fortunate that I was able to acquire one and I absolutely love it. This, this is just such an important watch, orologically speaking. The first Japanese chronometer grade movement. The first Grand Seiko ever. It's just... A stunning example of what Seiko was able to do way back when and when you look at what they're doing now it just they stay crushing it but fast forwarding to today with Grand Seiko Seiko all their various product lines bumping up prices garnering more brand equity yes it's probably given them more panache and exclusivity and ooh, they're so fancy and look they're expensive like the Swiss watches as a collector the lines have actually been blurred like, it's blurred the lines for me, all their various products. Listen, I value functionality, finishing, interesting complications. And guess what? You used to find that with Grand Seiko. And you still do. You still do find those things with Grand Seiko watches. But why would I spend money on an even more expensive Grand Seiko nowadays when they've been putting really impressive finishing crazy functionality and super interesting complications in just Seikos. Now, not just Seikos, but like their Prospects and their Presage series, things that aren't Grand Seiko. And you can get those for less money than if it had Grand Seiko on the dial. Like there are Presages that have ridiculous dials, ridiculous finishing and spring drive movements. There are Prospects LXs that have Insane spring drive movements, insane functionality, titanium everywhere. It's crazy. And they're like half the price of a Grand Seiko nowadays. Or maybe the question should be, why the heck would I spend sometimes over $5,000 for a Prospex LX and a Presage when they don't have Grand Seiko on the dial? But see, this is what I'm talking about. Everything's been blurred. The lines have been blurred. They're trying to make things more definitive and they're trying to delineate and, and partition things but as a collector i'm actually confused like where is the the value proposition here okay there's the 5500 dollar prospects lx spring drive that i want and there's a 4900 dollar crazy impressive presage spring drive but they don't have grand seiko on the dial so why would i spend that but then you look at the grand seikos 
that, yeah, have crazy, even crazier finishing, also using Grand Seiko movements, obviously. Really cool complications, but there's other non-Grand Seikos that have similar things for less money. Now, I get that if you want, like, the most supreme hand finishing and precious metals, along with the functionality and complication, then you have to go with Grand Seiko, right? But again, there's a ton of really great complications and functionality with those Prospex LX and Presage spring drive. So, but then, but then those Seikos themselves are incredibly expensive. So I should just spend a little more and get the Grand Seiko, right? But you know what? I, th I <laughs> as I've been like yelling at you right now, I I've actually realized something. Why the f would I put $5,000 towards anything that has Seiko anywhere on the dial when I could just put that money towards a Rolex. Oh, wait. Oh, it's cause I can't, you can't get a Rolex nowadays. <laughs> what was I thinking? Watch collecting is so, is so hard sometimes. And you should just not start, all right? I hope that we have these hats in stock, these shirts in stock. Just don't start watch collecting, all right? Look at them, they're beautiful. Go ahead, buy them at the shop, have some fun. All right, guys, well, Thanksgiving is over, so I think we can now, you know, look forward to the holidays all coming in, rushing in, and <sighs> I'll still be here confused. Grand Seiko, Seiko, why, why you gotta do this to me? All right, guys, well, I hope you had some fun with this episode, and uh, I'd like to have some input from you. So, like, what would your takeaway be? What would your advice be? Where is the value proposition here? Because I think the answer is Orient, right? You just buy an Orient instead of Grand Seiko or Seiko at the, this point. But leave me a comment. The comments really do help me out in the algorithm. And I'd like to learn from you. I learn from you just as much as you learn from me, guys. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving. For everyone who doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, I hope you had an amazing day. Uh, and um, yeah, guys, uh, I, I still hope you ate some good food, right? You don't have to be an American to eat some good food on a Thursday, right? And thank you so much for supporting me at the Time Teller Shop. Uh, I'm filming this before Black Friday, so I don't actually know how we did, but uh, if it's... If, the other years are any indication. I'm sure you guys went crazy and I, and I really do appreciate you guys supporting my shop. So thank you so much. TimetellerShop.com, uh, check it out. All right, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>